Okay, so this video is basically to show you how to change, I'm not sure why it's changing the focus there, the running wheels on a wardrobe door. Um, this particular one is from a house that was built in the 1980s. Um, aluminium externals, so all this down here and the top. This part is MDF. So the top you can see there's no wheels or anything in it um, and the bottom you've got one wheel there that one I've already replaced and one wheel there and if we look at it closely you can see it's full of crap um, and the actual wheel itself that bit there is broken so as a result when this is opening and closing um, it's quite an effort to push and in fact you can see here this is where it's basically dropped it down onto the track and the track has done damage to the actual door so I'm just going to pause this for a moment flip the door and show you what we need to do to get this sorted right so the door is flipped first thing I'm going to do is show you what we're actually going to need to fix the problem uh, ignore the state of everything in there but this is where I'm keeping my tools so you're going to need a standard screwdriver. Um, we're also going to need a much bigger version of that, but I've got that out in the garage. A Phillips screwdriver. Okay. Torch. Yes, I could use my phone, but my phone is currently being used for this. And also the part we need. So this one, there's probably other brands out there, but this is the one that I've got. So it's a roll track 4060, excuse the noise in the background, that's my autistic son. He's enjoying his Xbox. Um, make sure that you get the one that does not actually have um, the centre in it. So I've just actually taken one, that one back and replaced it with this one because the other one doesn't work. This has already got the centre bit in it. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this one handed. But basically what we have to do is take out this screw here. In here, you can just see there's another screw in there, um, which holds this whole thing in place. Um, and we're also going to remove the screw up here. And the last thing we're going to remove, there's a, a rubber spline. Oh, maybe there. Ah, ah, right, found it. The rubber spline is on the side. And that holds the MDF in place, but it also prevents this from coming up. So, first thing we're going to do is give myself a bit of working space. And let's just take this out. I don't have a tripod or anything for this phone, so basically what we're just going to do is undo this. It should come up so it's just through the hole. So we can see in here that will at some point, there we go, let go of that. So we will just pop that screw up through the hole, remove it, and I will clean this screw off before I use it because. Ugh, We'll have the same problem with the other screw. Put your tools close to where you're going to need them so you don't forget where they are. Okay, so now that that's out, the good thing is that that one came out a lot easier than the other one. The bad thing is that means it probably wasn't actually put in properly in the first place because the other one was a lot harder to remove. So we'll just take this one out. Now these are long screws. So, it takes a little bit to get them out. It's reached the point where I can do it with my fingers. Quite a long screw that, so we'll pop that next to its mate. And then we're going to go down here and take out this one. Now, I'm afraid I don't have any editing skills, so you're just going to have to put up with doing this okay so I'm going to put that screw this end of the wardrobe of the cupboard so I can find it again now 
if I just pull on that it's not going to come off and that's because of that spline so we'll just grab that other screwdriver and I'll show you how I got so basically in the corner you can just sort of lever it out it's not easy but it is doable now before I put this whole thing back again I will be cleaning the mess that is so sorry just realized you're just looking at our toilet it's definitely not ideal We'll try the other end. Wasn't as hard on the other one. I think this one's been jammed in quite tight. So you can see there that it is actually pushed in quite tightly. So we're just going to see if we can. Okay, I'm just going to pause it and leave this out because I need two hands. Okay, so. The ends didn't want to play ball. They did on the other one, but they're not on this one. So I found a point that's a little looser in the middle. And I'm just levering it down from here. So once you get it out, it comes out quite easily. Um, this spline is actually in quite, quite good order, so I will be able to reuse it, which is good because I don't want to be buying new stuff. Okay, and now this will come up and off. I'll put that on the carpet and you can see it basically runs in there so we will pull this up and out so this disgusting little moggin is our wheel so I am going to take this out to the garage clean it up and I'll show you what I do to get it to pieces Okay, so this is what it looks like now that it's been cleaned up a bit. So, as you can see, we've got three bits holding it together. And when we take it to pieces, this is what's going to fall out. Now, that rubbish on it is a mixture of hair, dust and grease. And it's really, really gross. So, my tool now is a really, really big screwdriver. And basically what I'm just going to do is just pop it in the side and lever it up. So from there, doesn't matter if this thing breaks. And I will be doing the same thing in here. Because it's wider as it goes in, I can use that just to lever those bits out. So I don't have two hands. I'm not sure if I can do this and show you. Let's just see if we can get this to stay standing. Uh, box to the rescue. Too much stuff on here. Okay, and I'll need the hammer afterwards for putting it all back together again. Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get. So let's just. Try not to stab yourself with it. Yeah, this is the side to do because this bit here um, hasn't been flared out, whereas this one it has been flared out slightly, so it's not meant to come out of this side. It doesn't necessarily mean to say that it won't, but it's not meant to. So let's just this is a bit of a pain to do. It will come off, at least the other one did. So it's, you can just start to see a bit of movement there. Ugh. Got it. So that's step one done. And now we need to get the other end off as well. So that's... There is no easy way to do this. At least not with the basic tools I have access to. But I'm 
really don't want to break the rest of it. Let's just see if we can do it with the hammer. Not easily. So we're starting to get a bit of movement there. It's splaying out, but it still hasn't popped. And we want it to pop. Okay, I hope if it at least even if it just like, there we go. So that is our second disgusting piece. I'm just gonna remove the worst of the crap off that. Take our wheel off. Ugh. That is just gross. <laughs> and now we're gonna just gonna get the replacement wheel out okay so nice clean wheel wipe the worst of that off with my extremely gungy fingers right wheel on and let's just get all this together right So this is a way to put it back together. So as you can see, our wheel now turns freely. That is all back together again, and we can go back into the house and put it back together. So I will be bringing this back with me, and I'm just going to pause it for a moment and go wash my hands before I do the next bit. Okay, so now that my hands no longer look like I've been playing in the tar pits, what we're going to do next is we're going to just check how the other one's put together. So we can see just from that little bit there that it's gone in that direction. So of course this other one needs to go in the opposite direction. So it'll be going like that. And in here... And just see those two little grooves there? Um, those are supposed to hang on to that little bit there. So we need it to go like that, I believe. So we're just going to pop it in, putting a finger underneath it. I think that's how it goes. Ah. It's going to pop you down while I get... Okay, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of running repair on this. I've just determined that this side of flare is flared correctly. This side doesn't flare quite enough, so it no longer actually fits in the groove. And these two probably because of my maneuvers with the screwdriver do flare slightly too much so I'm going to go out grab a pair of pliers push these two slightly closer together and grab that one and just bend it out slightly so I shall be back as soon as I have done that okay so now all those bits have been straightened and bent and you can see that that is now fitting in those grooves this bit is pointing up where we want it to be and what we're going to do now is put the this bit back on top. Okay. So when we're putting it back, we want to make sure that this bit is exactly right. Because otherwise when that screw goes back in, it won't actually grasp the part of the door that it's supposed to be. So the first thing we're going to do is clean this screw off on here and drop it in. And 
grab my screwdriver from down here and just screw this in so this should be going straight in so we just need to lift it up slightly Okay, excuse the noise in the background, I'm just going to deal with that. Sorry about that, teenage boys. One of those things that, well, are uh, unhelpful at times. Okay, so we've got that one in. I'm just going to drop this one in now and there should be a bit of resistance as we're putting it in. So put this one in and we'll go and do this one as well. This one wasn't quite in the right spot but it is now. So I've still got more of these to do so I'll see if I can do a better video the next time I do one but we can't afford to do them all at once so so that is now all in place, so all we've got to do now is just put the spline back under here. Now, by rights, we should be using a spline tool, which we don't have, so we're just going to do it the other way. So, basically, just pop it in, in the corner and push it up, and then we're going to do the other corner, making sure that we don't twist it. So basically force it into the corner and pop it up and then all the way along, push it in and do that from the other end as well. So you're basically working both ends into the middle. The first thing is just to get it more or less in place. And then we just smooth it out. So any bits that are like here, you can see it's just sort of wobbly. And we just push that up. Now if we had a spline tool, this would be a lot easier and a lot faster. I do have one, it's just that it's disappeared into the black hole of tools, which I'm sure most people have running around somewhere. Okay, so basically all that's left to do once this is in is to clean the track. Clean that, which is horribly dusty, and of course that's on the inside of the wardrobe so we don't normally see it. And then this particular one is the same as these ones here. So when you're putting it in, you put it in with the bottom outwards down down that area and then you put it in up here first lift it up into that track and then it should slot onto the bottom track and the bottom track basically looks like that probably including muck <laughs> so that's everything um sorry it's longer than it should have been but it's all basically all done all ready to go and um, yeah, I'll have another go at a better video the next time I do one, which will probably be in a few weeks' time when we can afford more of the wheels.